you know, as the corporate capitalist system decays, there's growing pain at one level of ordinary experience, but there's also a growing um, sense that the welfare state or the social democratic strategies are basically over. And we could go into an analysis why that is, decline of labor, globalization, etc. in this country, race issues. Um, but unlike a collapse, which might have produced a crisis political shift, mm -hmm. maybe to the right, yeah. maybe to the left, uh, the stagnation and decay and pain is forcing people either to innovate or things get worse. There's no solution from the state. Um, and so what we're seeing is at two, three levels. One, there are many, many projects, very practical, I can describe some of those. There's also an explosion of ideas, people thinking through what does this all mean, where does it go, and there's new activism around this. Uh, I would say the prehistory of a big movement is happening. Not the, we're not yet at a place where there's an extraordinary political movement. It's the preamble to that, the pre preliminary questions. So uh, examples, the most, uh, most pressing, the most interesting example is work in Cleveland, which people have heard about Evergreen, it's called. Um, it, it's, a comp it's a very poor neighborhood, 40,000 people, almost entirely black, uh, average income maybe 20,000 a year, which is very low, uh, unemployment rate of maybe 40%, very high. It's a very painful black community. So in that community is a series of worker-owned cooperatives connected by a nonprofit corporation. So, it's, so not just for the workers, but to build the community is the concept. And then, and they're large, they're rather large. One of them is the largest, I think, yes, the largest uh, greenhouse in the, any urban area in the United States. So it produces three million heads of lettuce a, uh, a year. It's very significant. These are not little co-ops. People often think of co-ops as only small. Uh, another one is an industrial scale um, laundry, maybe the greenest laundry in, an, in that part of the country, a third of the water, a third of the heat, etc. cetera, for, in, for hospitals and universities. It's a large industrial scale. And then there's a solar installation company, all cooperatives. But what makes it unique is this connection with the community. So some of the profits go to the community, not just to the workers, and also to start new ones in the same structure. Uh, on top of that, in this area are universities and hospitals, very big ones. Uh, one of the biggest in the world, uh, the Cleveland Clinic is there and Case Western Reserve University, University Hospital. They purchase, they buy three billion with a B in goods and services uh, every year. Now, that's in addition to salaries, in addition to construction, just what they buy. None of it from this area. So this group has been able, we've been helping them use some of these purchases, a lot of it from public money for health care and education for universities, use these purchases to help stabilize, instead of big corporations, a structure that is cooperative, complex, community building, and green, and trying to use this process to recirculate and build an entirely different structure. Radically decentralized, but also uh, aware of how to deal with the market. In this sense, it's like a planning system because you're using public, quasi-public purchasing. So that's so-called Cleveland model. It's become a model that many parts of the country people are trying to replicate. Uh, it's very interesting because once, as we were talking earlier, you get a model, um, many, many people begin to say, well, you can do something. They don't realize that you can do something until somebody does it. And then many, there's Atlanta, Georgia is doing this. There's one in the Washington, D.C. area, one in Jacksonville, Florida is beginning, beginning to explore it. Jackson, Mississippi, Denver, many parts of the country, are, Pittsburgh, are beginning to explore developing this kind of problem, this kind of solution, because they can't solve it the old way. The old social democratic welfare state doesn't work. And there is no other solution. The market doesn't work. So the pain gets worse, but there's no crisis. So out of that process, people are just beginning to say, you know, we can do something ourselves and then begin to use the state and use other resources uh, in this way to build a different structure. Now it's very participatory, very green, very community oriented. It's not the top-down state socialism. It's, it's not the welfare state with corporations and the social democratic structures. It's an attempt to rebuild a different vision 
Uh, but very practical, absolutely practical. What we've discovered, uh, and our group has been involved in helping this, is that in local communities, this, which is worker ownership of the means of production, very radical, but it's very practical, and it's not state, like the Soviet state. So we find even people who think that of themselves as conservatives, they think of themselves because they believe in individual hard work. They see people working hard, they see local structure, they see participation, they don't see a big state, so they find it very positive, not negative. Uh, nationally, in the United States, we have a debate, an ideological debate. But locally, it's very different because it's, it, it has to be, but I think the key is it has to be very practical. And once it's practical, we find very, very strong interest. You can, and if we have time, we can talk about the historic roots of these kinds of ideas and anarcho-communal theory. And there's many different traces that you can take it back. Or we talked about John Dewey. But more important today is that it meets a, a need and it resonates with the democratic spirit as well as practical need. So that would be an example. There are many other things like that happening in the United States now out of this context of pain, out of the difficulties.